Hello and welcome to pmslounge.com. Today we are discussing project scope statement. What is this all about? Is this an input, an output, a tool or technique? Is this a process? Well, this is definitely not a process. Project scope statement, as the name gives away, is part of the scope management knowledge area. Which process is this part of? That is something we will discuss in the latest slides. But as always, if you're into reading articles, first link in the description is going to take you to a relevant article on this topic over at our official website, pmclounge.com. So do check that out. Also, second link in the description will be a playlist of every single video that we have done as part of the scope management knowledge area. So two important links, do check them out. Let's get started. A quick reminder, do hit the like button. That seems to be the only way YouTube is going to keep you posted every time we upload new content. So by now you already know that project scope statement has something to do with the scope management knowledge area. Well, the most important output of define scope process is project scope statement. So we have already discussed this process, define scope process. Third link in the description will take you to a video on this topic. And project scope statement is actually the most important output of this process. This is a document. So project scope statement is just a document, which like I said, is the most important output of the process known as define scope process. Now we've actually touched a bit on this topic, the project scope statement here and there in several videos and articles. One of the videos that I'm going to link in the description below, the fourth link is going to be basics of scope management because in that video, we touched upon an equation, which was something like this. Scope baseline is equals to project scope statement plus work breakdown structure plus work breakdown structure dictionary. So when you say you have baselined scope, what it means is that you have three documents that are baseline. That means the project scope statement, the WBS and the WBS dictionary. So these three documents make up your scope baseline. So we touched upon this uh, when we talked about this uh, equation, we touched upon the topic known as project scope statement. So we've touched upon this topic of project scope statement here and there in bits and pieces, but never really covered it in the detail that it deserves. That is exactly what we are doing as part of this video. Now, once I received a comment about the difference between project scope statement and the requirements document, and I have already created a video on this topic, so it will be linked in the description below. The fifth link in the description below is going to take you to that launch fever video where I talked about the difference between project scope statement and requirements document. The links in the description are very, very relevant and they are extremely important. So do check them out. Lounge Fever, by the way, is a series of videos that we do where we try to answer your questions. So if you have any questions related to PMP courseware, related to anything around project management, you can drop them in the comments and we'll definitely get back to you. We'll definitely answer your questions. And if your question is really good that can help and benefit others, we are going to create a video on it as well. So let's talk in detail about project scope statement. The most elementary and the basic way to understand what this document is all about is the fact that it tells you what work you are and are not going to do as part of this project. So some people might be confused with this term. What people are not going to do as part of their project. Why is that being documented? And let me give you an example. So let's say your project is a web development project. You are developing a website. And as part of this project, it is clear that you are not going to construct a house. It is a web development project, right? But that is not something that you will explicitly mention in your project scope statement. So 
in your project scope statement, you are going to mention whatever work that you are going to do and anything that is relevant to your project, which you are not going to do. Like I said, in a web development project, you need not explicitly mention that you're not going to construct a house. That is something which is understood, right? So we will talk more about this and we'll have more examples around what goes in as part of your project scope statement document, which is going to clarify what all goes in and what we really mean when we say the work that you're going to do as part of the project and the work that you're not going to do as part of the project should be in your scope statement document. A quick reminder before we move ahead, if you're looking for book recommendations for your PMP exams, head over to pmclounge.com slash resources. Hundreds of PMP aspirants have cleared their exams using these resources. All right, now let's talk about the constituents of the project scope statement document. What are the elements or the subsections of this document? Number one on the list is the product scope. And when we say product scope, we mean the product that your project is setting out to achieve. What is the end product, right? What will happen when you complete your project? It could be that you are creating a physical product. It could be that you are creating a service. It could be that you are introducing an improvement in an existing system or a process. It could be some other outcome as well. That all of this basically means the product of your project. So this product scope briefly describes what is the product of your project all about. So this section in your scope statement document, remember we are talking about the constituents of the scope statement document, the sections of the scope statement document. And this section, the product scope section describes the product or the end result that your project is setting out to achieve. Here's an example, a functioning e-commerce website. In your web development project, the product scope could be as simple as a functioning e-commerce website. The next section in the project scope statement document is all about project exclusions. Remember how we said in the beginning itself that the project scope statement clearly defines what you are going to do and what you're not going to do. Project exclusions is the section where you define and describe and document whatever that you're not going to do as part of the project. Now, of course, in your website development project, you're not going to explicitly document that you are not going to construct a house, right? That is something which is understood, but you can definitely document information which is related and relevant to your existing or current project that you're working on. So here's an example. When you're working on the project of developing a website under project exclusions in your project scope statement document, you can mention that the website will not be optimized for tablet users. So if this is something that you are not going to achieve, if this is something which you are not going to deliver as part of your project, you can clearly state that under project exclusions. This way, the end customer, the sponsor, all the major key stakeholders of your project know that there are certain things which you are not going to deliver as part of the project. And that is why project exclusions is a very important section in your project scope statement document. So now that we know what you are not going to deliver as part of the project, let's talk about what you are going to deliver as part of the project. Project inclusions or deliverables. Now this section in the scope statement document is basically a simple list and this list is going to document what you are going to deliver as part of the project that you have undertaken. And this list should be as exhaustive as possible. As exhaustive as possible is something which applies to project exclusions as well. But of course, only relevant and related information. Nobody expects you to document that you're not going to construct a house in the website development project. But 
anything that is related and relevant which you are not going to deliver should be documented under project exclusions and everything that you are going to deliver should be documented under project inclusions or the deliverables of the project here's an example website source code this is something that you are going to deliver design documents this is again something that you are going to deliver graphics or images for the website this again is something that you are going to deliver as part of this project reports the admin should be able to generate reports related to e-commerce data and that is something that you are delivering as part of the admin panel so that is again something that you should clearly document in the project inclusions or deliverables section of the project scope statement document Finally, you should also include acceptance criteria. Now, since we are talking about what you would deliver as part of the project and what you wouldn't deliver, it is only fitting that we include a brief about the project's acceptance criteria. All the key stakeholders should be on the same page when it comes to the acceptance criteria. And that is why it is important to document it in this critical document known as project scope statement. What is it that will satisfy the customer for project completion, right? You're done with the project. You go to the customer and the customer tells you, well, this is not something that I expected. That's when you show them the project scope statement document. That's when you show them what were the items that were excluded as part of the project. What were the items that you have mentioned in the deliverables section of the project scope statement what was the acceptance criteria that they agreed upon that they signed upon right if you have not made that out yet let me tell you explicitly that project scope statement is a document that is signed off by all key stakeholders of the project so acceptance criteria again is something that will be signed off by every key stakeholder involved in the project. Here's an example. The website must load in less than two seconds. This could be an acceptance criteria for your e-commerce website development project. So here's the question for this video. Who are the key team resources that can help you in the creation of this document known as project scope statement? Let me know in the comments. Definitely looking forward to your answers. And that is all that we had in this video. I hope you got value out of it. I hope you were able to understand what the project scope statement document is all about. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay notified whenever we upload new content. Also, don't forget to check out the website pmclounge.com, your number one free PMP resource. Thank you.